In this tutorial, we're going to program the logic that's going to allow us to spawn infinitely many forward bridge segments in the scene. So let's jump right in. Go to the scripts folder in your project's asset folder and create a new C sharp script. Let's give it the name Bridge Spawner. Now let's create an empty game object from the menu bar and call it Bridge Manager. Let's reset its transform component to 000. Select the Bridge Manager game object and select Add Component from its inspector window. Search the newly created c -sharp script, which is Bridge Spawner. This is yet a third way of attaching scripts to game objects in Unity. The first one we saw was simply dragging the script onto the intended game object in the game object hierarchy. The second way was dragging the script to the inspector window of the game object. And this is the third and final way of attaching scripts to game objects in Unity. It's useful to know all the different ways of doing something. It makes you feel like you've really mastered the subject. Now open up the bridge spawner script in Visual Studio. The first thing we need to do is put all of our bridge segments prefab in one variable. So let's create a public array of game objects and call it bridge prefabs. An array in C sharp is a variable that stores a collection of like items. So this bridge prefabs array can only store Unity game objects and nothing else. And we put these brackets after the variable type to indicate that it's an array. Now let's save the changes to our script and go back to the editor. Let's click on the bridge manager game object and go to its inspector window. You can see that it's asking us to declare a size for the array. Let's put an 8 because we have 8 prefabs for our different bridge segments for now. You can see that 8 empty game object fields have been added in the inspector window. And they're numbered from 0 to 7, not from 1 to 8. Now let's go to the prefabs folder and drag each of the bridge prefabs to one specific element in the array with one caveat, which is that the left and right corner segments have to be either the first two elements of the array or the last two elements. This is so that our random logic can be programmed easily later. I'm going to make them the last two. Let's set the changes and go back to the bridge spawner script in Visual Studio. Now let's create an enumeration structure that's going to help us classify each segment as either left corner, straight, or right corner. Let's name it n-type. Now we want to be able to take a prefab from the bridge prefabs array and pair it with its appropriate type under a single structure. To do that, we'll use a concept in object-oriented programming called classes, which allows us to encapsulate different data types, for example, a game object and an enumeration, under a common structure. To create a new class in C-sharp, just type the keyword class followed by the class name. We'll call ours capital S segments, because different segments are going to be spawned from its cloth, so to speak. This segments class is going to have two public data members. The first is a game object member called seg prefab, and the other one is an n type enum called seg type. And since they're public members or variables, they can be accessed from outside the class, i.e., elsewhere in the script, like the start or the update function. Now, these two variables are not initialized to anything, and there is a special way of initializing them using what's known in object oriented programming as constructors. Let's start a new line. To call the constructor of a class in C, -sharp, just type public and then the exact name of the class, followed by a pair of parentheses and curly brackets. So it's like a function of sort. Now let's pass in the class variables separated by a comma inside the parentheses. Now let's step into the body of this special function, i.e. the constructor, and type this dot segprefab equals segprefab. Terminate with a semicolon. Start a new line and type this dot segtype equals segtype, semicolon. So this block of code is basically specifying how the constructor of this class should be initialized. Now what's included in between the curly brackets is formally called the description of the class. Now let's create a variable from that class type and call it small s segment. This is formally called an instance of the big s segments class, or simply the small s segment object. Let's go to the start function and initialize the segment object using the constructor type segment equals new and now let's call the constructor of the big S segments class. Let's initialize the sec prefab parameter to the regular I shaped bridge, which I have stored in the first element of the bridge prefabs array, as we have specified it in the inspector. And this is how we access an element of an array. We put brackets after the array's name and then the number of the element. The first element is indexed as zero. Now let's put a comma and initialize the sec type parameter to straight. Now let's create a vector 3 that's going to be in charge of specifying the spawn coordinates for the prefabs in the scene. We'll call it spawn coord, and we'll initialize it to 000. Now let's create a void function down here that's going to have the task of spawning different bridge segments in different directions in the scene. 
Let's name it spawn segment. First, let's create a local game object variable and set it equal to the seg prefab member of our segment object. Let's name our variable prefab to instantiate. And you can see that when we put a dot after the segment object, our public members show up, including the seg type and seg prefab. In object oriented programming, this is called data encapsulation. It allows us to group multiple data, members, or variables under a single structure, which is very handy. We're actually going to use this variable to spawn whatever bridge segment prefab is stored in the seg prefab member to our scene. Also, let's create a local quaternion variable that's going to determine the rotation of the prefab that's yet to be instantiated in the scene. Let's call it prefab rotation and set it equal to the identity quaternion, which corresponds to no rotation. Now let's start a new line and write a simple if statement that's going to act as a sanity check for our script. If the prefab to instantiate is not null, meaning if this prefab to instantiate variable is not empty, then execute the following piece of code. And to instantiate or spawn a prefab at runtime, meaning as the game is playing, we use this instantiate function in Unity. And I've put an article that goes through instantiating prefabs at runtime in Unity from the Unity manual, so be sure to check it. So type instantiate, open parentheses. The first argument must be a game object variable that stores the prefab we want to spawn in our scene. For us, it's the prefab to instantiate variable. Then put a comma. Now the second argument is a vector 3 that tells this instantiate function where to place this prefab in the scene. We've already created the spawn called variable, so put that in here. The final argument of this function, separated by a comma, is a quaternion that rotates the instantiated prefab in the scene. This is going to be determined by our prefab rotation variable, so pass it in here. Now let's exit this if statement, and we're still in the body of the spawn segments function, and increment the z component by 6 units, which is the segment's length, so that when this function gets called again, the new prefab will be spawned at 006, and if it gets called the third time, it will be spawned at 0012, and so on. Now let's go to the start function, and write a simple for loop that's going to call the spawn segments function 10 times. So this means that we're going to spawn just 10 segments forward in the scene. And they are the same kind, which is the regular i shape segment. So start the counter i from 0, and as long as i is less than 10, execute this body of code, which is just the call for the spawn segment function. Then increment the loop counter by 1 after each iteration. You know what? Let's create an integer variable here and call it segs on screen, and set it equal to 10. And let's go back to our for loop and put it in the condition by replacing the 10. This variable here indicates the visible segments that are ahead of the player on the screen. Let's save the changes to the script and go back to the editor and test our game. Let's remove this placeholder of a bridge from our game object hierarchy because we're gonna spawn our own bridge segments instead. Hit play. You can see that 10 regular eye-shaped bridge segments have been spawned in our game ahead of the player, one after the other. And if we pause our game, we can see the spawned prefabs in the game object hierarchy. And there are exactly 10 of them. If we click on the first one, we can see in its inspector window that it has coordinates 000, and the next prefab game object has coordinates 006, and as we move to each adjacent segment, there will always be a 6 unit increment in the z forward direction. So our logic is working correctly, and if we stop our game, these 10 game objects get destroyed from our scene. This is because they are instantiated at runtime only. Now we want these forward segments to be randomly generated. So let's go back to the bridge spawner script and program the random logic. 